Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the book tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna start by taking just some pictures of this from uh, a very flat view. So let's go hold the space bar and go to top view. And my computer is gonna take a second to do that for some reason. And let's grab this and just turn it so it faces the correct direction. And then let's duplicate it once. And this is just for reference, really. I'm going to turn it so it's flat like that. And that should be good. Let's do one more duplicate and then turn it so it's facing us like that. And now that we have that, we're going to select all of these. And I'm going to turn on the wireframe view. And now I'm going to zoom in. Okay. And we're just going to take a picture. Uh, I use... For taking screenshots, I use the uh, standard uh, snipping tool that's in Windows. There's lots of different ways you can take screenshots, uh, print screen on your keyboard, things like that. So I'm just going to grab a screenshot. And now we have that, we're going to copy it. And I'm going to go over to Photoshop, create a new document. And we want to make this texture a square texture, so we're going to do 2048 by 2048. Okay, now that we have that, I'm gonna paste this image of the book into here. And instead of UVing first, I'm gonna do the texture first. And I'm using this as kind of a guideline. And this works good for low poly textures and things like that. You wouldn't wanna do this on something high poly. This is just a good, this is a good way to kind of get your foot wet for modeling and texturing and things like that. So let's move these all over. So we have them so they can fit the canvas pretty nicely and apply that transformation. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down quite a bit on here. And now I'm just going to paint the front of the book. And maybe we'll paint the side as well. So when you're UVing, you're just going to basically unwrap the book. And so if you're going to imagine if the book was unfolded facing back towards you. And these are just my sizing references. So let's, let's actually do this a little bit differently. I'm going to paint behind this layer. And for this layer, instead of turning the opacity down, I'm going to turn it up. And I'm going to desaturate the image by hitting Control-Shift-U. And I'm hit Control-M. And we're going to go into the curves and make this completely black and white. And let's see, I have like, that looks about right. And then I'm going to set this layer to multiply. So all the color will pass through and I can turn this down just a little bit. So now I can still see my guides for painting. And now I'm going to grab my pencil for my Wacom tablet and we're going to do a little bit of painting. So I wanted to start with the default uh, purple color. So let's just fill the whole canvas since that's going to be the majority of the color. And I'm going to grab some darker colors and start painting those on top of here. Okay, getting a little bit of lag on my computer. I'm actually gonna paint this. So the color is probably gonna be within this area for our primary zone of color. So I'm gonna pretend that uh, that's maybe, maybe this outside part could be silver or a darker color. And we're gonna paint, let's see. Maybe like a different shade of purple. You could have these, remember those are kind of the bits of color that were lifted. Maybe they're catching the light or something like that. We can always modify this as we go. I just want to give a rough idea how to paint this. And you think like this will have to be bigger than this area. So we're gonna paint beyond this a little bit because if you imagine a box unfolded, it's going to have extra edges and lips to that edge. And I'm actually going to move this over a bit because I want to paint, maybe I want a front and a back to the book. So I'm going to keep it all as one object. I'm selecting both layers. I'm going to scale this up so I could fit the front and the back right here. So I'm going to grab this and grab this area. 
And actually, I'm going to slide this over again. Remember, I got the back of the book right here. So I can just take that, slide it over, and duplicate it. And that'll be my reference for kind of how thick the back of the book is. And I'm just going to slide it over the top of that one so those lines line up. And then I'm going to grab the front of the book, make a copy, Control C, Control V, and paste it. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to line it up to this other book here. I'll turn down the opacity a little bit just so we can see where it's going. And you can see I can line it up right to that edge. Once that's done, I'm going to turn both their opacities back up to 100% so that when I merge them, there's no issues. Merge and reset it to multiply. Then zoom back out until I can see my entire book there. And I'm going to move this over and grab the paper part of this reference really quick and just put that in the clipboard, hit Control C, and then move this back over and paste this. May have the paper down this way. And the paper, you think it's going to have to have those edges and stuff for the other sides. Maybe it can just be the same area. We'll put the paper down there, merge that down. I have to realign this fairly quick. And since the front and back are going to be pretty similar, we'll duplicate this over. You see I have two layers. Line this one up about there. And then just cut the extra bit out there in the center and control E to merge it down. And I'm going to grab this area. Well, hang on a second. I just want to check something. Oh, I must have overlapped my references a little bit. It should still work fine though. So let's put it back to multiply. And this will be the spine of the book. Fill that. Go back to here, turn down the opacity a little bit, and start painting in some details and edges. So let me see, the edge of the book would probably be lighter. And you gotta think this is multiplying over, so let's make it a little darker looking, but we know it's gonna be lighter. So I'm going along here. And then the spine of the book right there. And we're gonna remember these metal corners, those are gonna be painted later as a separate objects. That's their separate objects on the mesh as well. Okay. And I'm going to paint a little highlight along this edge kind of as a reference point. Let's put it right on this line. There's lots of ways to do this. I could show some other tutorials. This is kind of a I think this is a good beginner method to start out and understand what you're working on. Okay. And then I'm going to select the spine of the book. And I'm going to turn off this reference layer just for a second. And I'm going to choose a color just for the spine of the book. Maybe just a little bit of a lighter color. So you can see that's basically a book that's unfolded towards us. I'm going to fill in these edges. It's good to have a little extra space on your texture. Just, uh, it just it'll work out a lot better that way. You'll have uh, it's more space. A little bit of padding is good to have. I am going to increase the size of this just slightly, though. Take up a little bit more. And I keep having to move this around. I'm going to cut that off in a layer. Undo it and then paste the new one down. Let's leave it on its own layer for now. Okay, so now let's make a new layer on top and we'll just call this front and back, just for reference points. And let's make the paper really quick. So you gotta think the paper, let me jump back to the 3D model to reference this and go back, hold spacebar, go back to perspective view. And remember the paper is this piece right here and it's wrapping around that way. And that's all we're gonna need to texture. It's just this area showing. 
So if you imagine that unwrap, it's going to be a really long line. So let's jump back to here. And we know how wide we need it. And it's about that wide. So let's just make it this wide here. As wide as the image there, since it's all relative to the same size. And since it's going to be paper lines, we can kind of get away with stretching a little bit of stuff. But let's do like a lighter kind of brown paper color. I paste that in. And I go back to this one and hit multiply just so we can see as it goes over top of the paper. And I'm going to slide this to the center because I don't think we're going to need as much UV space for the sides of it. And now I'm going to go into here, lower the opacity a bunch, and come in here and just kind of start painting where my where the corners would be so probably catch more light in that area and it'd be a nice little guideline for the corners and now that that's done i can take that and just move this paper piece down to the bottom oops i have it on the same layer as that other one let's let's cut it Control x make a new layer paste it and then title that paper we'll title this reference and base color. It's good to have some titles. I don't always use titles, but you should. It's a good idea. Let's make a new layer on top of the paper. I'm going to hold the Alt key and just tag it on top so it's a mask. Now anything I paint will stay within that area. Say I was painting in purple. It stays within the area that's below it. And to turn this layer to multiply, grab the paper color, uh, with color picker. I'm just going to go across it like that. Oops. I was holding shift to get a nice straight line. It might actually be too straight. Maybe better if I just do it by hand and have kind of a more of an interesting look to the paper. Like there's kind of thicknesses and thinnesses. It's not even a word. Thinnesses. <laughs> Let's drag it across. Make it look really kind of funky. And you could you could have these really you could draw them however you want. Probably better to be a little bit straighter than that. But I'm using my Intuos right now. It's a little harder to draw straight lines as I draw a bunch of decently straight lines as I say that. Go in here and kind of blend these. It's erasing a little bit. Okay. And now the top lines. And we're actually going to, once we do the UVs, those are going to be a little bit stretched, but they should be okay. And then maybe make another layer. We're going to title the other one. We're going to call it shadow. It's basically the darker lines. And we're going to make another layer, and this will be highlight. And we'll set the highlight to screen or maybe soft light. Let's try it out. Soft light, which should work, and make it a little bit brighter. And basically, just pull out a few points here, go in the corners, and make those stick out a bit more. And you can do this really rough. You could be going back and forth between Maya and your Photoshop document. We're going to grab all these layers right here, hold shift and select them all. I'm going to slide this down. So it's kind of right on the bottom there. And I'm going to give it a little bit more paper by hitting uh, control T, transforming the base piece and holding alt and shift together. I'm just make it a little bit wider because I was talking earlier about having extra padding. Okay, there we go. Now I want to do those silver corner bits that we had. And since we have that already figured out for the base book of what size we want, I'm going to move this around until I see the silver piece. There it is right there. And I'm going to go behind it. This could be gold, silver, whatever you want to do. I'm going to say silver and grab kind of a gray, blue maybe, and use it as the base and paint behind it. And yeah, I think this is going to be, when you unfold this, you're going to have that piece, plus you're going to have the back piece and all those edges. So I'm going to do a front and a back, basically. So this will be the back one over here, kind of the flip side. And I'll make that one a little darker because it'll be on the inside. Maybe it won't have as much details. And then these are going to be the sides, so I'll make those a little bit lighter. And this is also determining kind of the edges so once I turn off my reference layer, I'll be able to see what I'm working on. And once you have UVs and stuff, you can start moving all this stuff around. That's one reason we're keeping all these layers too. 
now I have that, I can just turn that off, and now I know what that shape's gonna be like. So this, you could paint any kind of details you wanted here. Say you want to have like a kind of engraving going along the edge line here. Let me go paint it a little darker along the edge. And since it's metal, you want to start adding some highlights. Maybe we'll start brightening up these corners. It's going to wear a little bit brighter and maybe the light's hitting on this edge. And you can just keep adding details as you go. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but just wanted to get the point across. A little bit of patterning here. There we go. And you can just do whatever you want for this bit. Okay. So we've got, let's take a look at our book again in 3D. And check out what we have. Okay, so we have the paper for the sides, we have the outside and the top and bottom. Uh, we don't really have an inside. We didn't do anything for the inside. We didn't really do anything for that paper bit. That could be, we could UV that onto the, uh, the existing paper down here. And the inside doesn't have as much, need to have as much detail, so we could probably just kind of UV it as a smaller size and stack it down maybe down in here. So I'll just fill this area with darker purple. And then maybe I'll do for the paper, we'll do another little little bit of corner paper. And I'll just put that right here. So that'll be like the corner that's showing perhaps. And I could have a little bit of maybe a little bit of detail to that, some light hitting it. Maybe this, grab the gradient here. Maybe we're, we have, we're painting all our light in perhaps or something like that. And you could even do a little bit of a drawing like peeking out of, or maybe just a little corner insignia or something. And I don't have a concept for this, so I'm just kind of going off the, you know, just random figuring stuff up as I, figuring stuff out as I go. Okay. And then we have front and back. So let's save this file. And we're going to call it book. And let's save this file as a PSD. And just in case the PSD doesn't work, sometimes Maya doesn't like PSDs, we're going to do a JPEG of it as well. And save. And that's the end of part two. So wait, uh, check out for, <laughs> wait for part three to come soon. And if you liked the video, uh, like it and let me know if you have any comments and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you in part three. Bye.